Hello, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing because basically we've just had a foot on conversation before this and I was like, we need to stop because we need to start recording. <laughs> good material we're missing i know i know so how is your morning anyway well how's your day been it's a monday monday morning monday afternoon um i'm assuming it's a busy day for you as always it has been it's um i so i've had a really amazing lockdown's been strangely uh cr sort of surprisingly creative for me i've been working with a friend um and we've been writing an album uh together and it's kind of culminated in uh, we're, we're we're planning a live show and um, we're trying to do a cover of the Four Horsemen by Aphrodite's Child. I don't know if you're familiar with this. I song. am. Yeah, I am. <laughs> so I spent my morning <laughs> trying to rework um, that song. So it's been quite fun. So you, what you're writing music? I I am. Yeah. <laughs> Um, is there anything you can't? Is there anything you can't do? Because we were talking about earlier that like you are you dance, you I do makeup, try. you do creative. You're like a, you're polymath. Well, I mean, it's like what's that thing? Jack of all trades, like king of none, or whatever it is. So I, I, um, I've got. To look, but... <laughs> I definitely think I definitely think you're king of one. Yeah, definitely you are. But like, it's great though to hear that you have so much so much interest and curiosity in other different things rather than just what people kind of know you for within the kind of fashion and the art world sort of thing it's quite nice so how did that kind of come about going do you have a do you ever have a, do you have thoughts going I just want to kind of write something I've got this idea about music and then suddenly you go to someone or does it how does it come about so about two years ago um I was working at Days Beauty which was a uh it's kind of a you know a, a platform for um you know young and diverse uh, hair and makeup and creatives mm -hmm. to showcase, showcase their work. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, somebody came to me and asked if I would creative direct their album because they were working on an album. And um, I I think we, we kind of got talking and realized we were very much into the same sort of styles of music. Um, and I, I sort of said, well, I mean, I'd actually really just, I'd rather write <laughs> write the album with you. I love together. that. I love how bold and bold you are. Like going, rather than just me create a director, can I like write it with you? Like that is just like well, so... I mean, the, the, this guy, his name is Sam Thomas, he's incredibly talented. Um and it felt it was, you know, I don't think it I don't think it was me being pushy. It was really just, oh, we found some real kind of um common territories and we want to explore it. Right. So okay. um no, it was all in all in good uh, good humor. <laughs> I love that. Not that bulldozer. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, so tell me. Well, I read right. This is very, very strange. So, I read that in your household when you were younger, you weren't allowed kind of like it was like anti like cosmetics and stuff. Well, so I wouldn't. It, I don't think it wasn't really anti anything, but I definitely grew up in a house of engineers. My dad. Um, uh, it was it was diagnosed much later in life that he has Asperger's, which um, was something that I think, you know, is a, a very is a very interesting um, mindset. I think it can make you know, for you know, it's Asperger's is um, you know it's a spectral thing. It can take mm. kind of many shapes and forms. But you know, he is a really incredible kind of. Um, engineer and he builds things and he sort of invents things and I I grew up in that environment it was sort of fairly dominated by a masculine mathematical um approach to life mm -hmm. um and my brother my brother was an an, a, an, an engineer and my sister also became uh, an engineer and my mum wow um, my poor mum had to put up with it all <laughs> had to put up with it all and um that's probably why we're so close and uh, and so it was it was yeah it was just dominated by a very sort of masculine presence and I think um, especially growing up with uh, you know around a kind of a very um, strong mindset like that feminine things were sort of not 
that there just wasn't as much room for them I think in the in the in the house I in the household I grew up in which has certainly shaped and inspired the way that I work and I'm I'm actually very grateful for it now <laughs> mm -hmm. so so now so now that you're like super super creative now does that kind of go when you go back home are they kind of more like open and intrigued to kind of what your life is now compared to what you what you used to be grew, grew up with well I think actually in a very like humbling way um you know they're interested to a degree but you know it's life as usual I mean my dad will be outside I don't know wiring up cables to I don't know tag 5g that he can't get <laughs> or buy his, I, don't I know. love it I love it that's totally opposite to my household. We're all very much creative and artistic. They're, at Christmas, they they sit, they, they get, we have a piano and they sing around the piano and harmonise, literally, and oh, I can't sing. So, that's like something from a Charles Dickens novel, isn't it? <laughs> it's like the Von Trapp family. It really much is. But but I so how did it all start? Like because we were talking about you're very very fascinated in dance. You had you did like three D design as well and. You were you're interested in music. So how did it how did you decide to go with all these different things that you probably could go down? And where was the makeup sort of trail? Because I said you earlier, you were saying you were a diver as well, but you're also into dance as well. So how did the yeah, how did your journey come about? So so I think from uh when I was, you know, when I was about seven or eight, I engaged in both dancing and diving they kind of happened at the same time um, I had a very physical upbringing and um, I would tour around the UK doing uh, diving competitions and then you know as I got older I dance and drama and sorry musical theatre became um, a lot more present in my life and I was doing it sort of five days a week um, and when I moved to London I kind of you know, obviously there comes a point where you say, you know, when you do your A-levels or whatever, okay, you're going to take this career professionally and engage with it further. Mm. And I didn't do that. I kind of, I think also because I, you know, I'm from Cambridge, uh, which is fairly, I went to a very middle of the road school, um, but it's a very academic place. And I think I was surrounded by a lot of very intellectual, academic, sort of um, traditionally driven people. I mean, and Cambridge is a strange place. I mean, on one hand, it's home to um, like Pink Floyd, but it also is home to Osama bin Laden. So it's quite an eclectic mix of people. I love that. <laughs> in Cambridge. Um, but I think I just felt like, oh my God, I've got to do something kind of academic. So I'll do maths and physics and um, and uh, and history for, for A-levels. And then I think I suddenly realized actually uh, actually I want to do something creative and um, so I so I applied to St Martin's to do uh, an, a degree in um, product design industrial design and um, and I stayed there for I dropped out at the end of my second year because I just uh, it just felt a little bit too kind of conformist for me mm -hmm. um, and then at the same sort of time, you know, I was still I was still taking dance classes uh, at Pineapple and, and various places, and I I met Theo Adams, um, the, the great Theo the, Adams with his company. The great Theo Adams, so, yeah, we love Theo Adams, and I met him, and I joined his company, and I began working with them as a as a dancer and as a performer, and we, you know, we've been to Tasmania and Japan, and we've been to. New York together and I had a really I think honestly that experience was probably the most informative um and Theo is wise beyond his years I don't know if you've ever had the pleasure of meeting him I've unfortunately not I've heard many many amazing things and his creative vision is incredible like I've seen him at parties and stuff and his Plum of Faith I think he's creative director of Plum of Faith as well like I've seen some mm -hmm. amazing stuff but I've unfortunately never met him and I'd love to meet him at some point <laughs> He's incredible. I think he's sort of all of the, all of the, you know, the Joan Collins, the Joan Rivers, the Beyonce's, the all of the power divas in like one body. That's Theo. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's amazing. But, uh, but also he really like showed me, it was, I think the most sort of liberating experience working with that company because, you know, again, I, you know, I was from Cambridge and it, and Cambridge isn't really, I mean, I know I was joking before, it's not particularly diverse, 
Um, and so I was probably somewhat, you know, sheltered in a way and suddenly being surrounded by opera singers and, you know, pe ballerinas from the, you know, Royal, Royal Ballet Company and then um, a Japanese dancer who was amazing at Butoh and all of these kind of amazing characters, which were the Theo Adams Company to have mm. the, you know, Gwendolyn Christie, who's in Game of Thrones, she was part of the company. Um, and to, to see that everybody was so kind of like free in their minds and their bodies was a really liberating experience. And Theo, you know, Theo doesn't care what anyone thinks. And he, I don't think he ever has. And that's what's sort of so powerful about him and inspiring. He really kind of, um, you know, showed me, almost set a precedent for how I understood you could live, you know, mm. you could Yeah, play. yeah, yeah. But because because his work is so, I mean, people would really need to go through his work and look at it because it is so out there and so kind of experimental, and it is just like kind of like just give like here here I am, this is what I am, give or take it. Like it's it's really really fascinating. It is, and it's definitely you know it's a very it's immersive, so it's difficult sometimes to really communicate how the power of the Theo Adams company and their performances without being there. Mm. Um, because it is so, a lot of the time, they're very close to the audience. So you have that human sort of interaction. Um, a lot of it is based on, you know, uh, music that we know, uh, because, you know, he'll do a lot of, uh, um, what do you call it? Um, God, my, my brain's gone like voice, not voiceover. What's it called? when Spoken you like, uh, You know, no, but when you, when you like uh, mime something and it's, What's the word? When you mime something. Um, that, uh, in, you know, like, now what's karaoke? <laughs> when you sing, karaoke. Um, what? Uh, I, mean, I don't oh know. Oh my God, this is embarrassing. As in, you know, uh, anyway, whatever. He uses a lot of a lot of music that's well, sort of like well referenced. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, um, and people, and you know, part of the performance is miming along to it. That's what I meant. Right, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And so he'll do these really, really clever kind of cuts of, of famous pieces from, you know, film or theatre and all of these references that you understand mixed with really powerful classical music. And then he'll suddenly put a remix of Beyonce. And so it's all this very kind of, you're very aware of all of the references and they're all quite diverse, but there's something quite sort of, um, sort of eerie about the whole thing, because mm. at the end, it's all about kind of the tragedy of the performer and this kind of, this desire to be seen and be loved and be, uh, um, you know, understood. And so it's, and, and the audience is, I think is the, you know, becomes very receptive of that because it's so close and personal. Mm. Mm. There's, there's something um, about immersive theater, like when, when Punch Drunk was around, I don't know if you've seen Punch Drunk, but they, it's I know of it, yeah. say, same thing. People, my friend, one of my friends, uh, Daisy would go like had been 15 times over the course that it would go, be there because it's this immersive, there's about 15 different stories happening at the same time and you just go like, and you have to go back and it's, there's something about this immersive quality, uh, very, very different to Theo Adams, but this immersive quality that people, audiences absolutely love because they like to feel that emotion, that, that, that experience. Well, you, lose, you lose yourself in it, don't you? And I yeah. think that's, you know, watching a show uh you know is obviously great but it's part you know it takes it to another level when you're on a physical level experiencing the production as well mm. and so and so, so from from going through adams how did the makeup come into it was you doing makeup or was it anything to do with like through adams was that inspired and then you go okay maybe i should try that no it was i um i well i around the same sort of time I was doing you know I needed a job because I dropped out of university and I didn't have any money and I became a face painter <laughs> a kid's face painter that, that story that story always is like the person the things that I always say to people like oh yeah she was a face painter first and people just go like what I'm like and that's the story everyone always knows that you're a face painter, yeah, face no, painter at a children's it. party <laughs> um yeah no I actually got really um I got quite a name for myself in London, especially around the rich families in like North London. I'd go and I remember doing like parties on the Bishop's Avenue because I got quite good. And I, I joined an agency called Mystical Fairies. <laughs> where I'd have 
to like. Are they, st- are they still going? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's mystical. It's and I would have to go. Oh my god, I hated it. I loathed it. But you know, it was well paid, and I'd have to go and dress up as a fairy, and I'd have to go to these like. Um, very well-off families and paint their, their utterly spoiled children. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, and then and then take my money and you know take the fairy wings off and go home. And um, so I so I was doing that for a number of years. And then Matthew Stone, the artist, um, was doing. A, he's a friend of the Thea Adams Company, and he was doing a um, a shoot for ID magazine, and he wanted some body painting. And you know, I was face painting and also sort of body painting and whatever. And he asked me to be involved so I um I went along and did it and uh there was there was also a makeup artist on set um a professional makeup artist with a nice clean kit (laughs) and I remember I was was in this sink washing like clay or something out of my brush like my nasty brushes I remember looking over at her and just thinking that I want that job like that looks so much easier than what I'm doing yeah so I so I then kind of just got myself a makeup kit and just it took it from there. God, it's, it's amazing how like someone's journey, like I love it uh, how you didn't set out to do it and then suddenly you did it. And then suddenly you're, uh, of course, after like a lot of hard work and talent that this becomes your career, like this or one of your careers or one of your in, your interests. And I find that absolutely fascinating. And did you, when you, when that, obviously when the uh, ID magazine um shoot came out because obviously it was quite and it still is a very very well respected publication did you feel like when you when you're kind of on that success route because you you did achieve a lot within a short space in time did you feel like you were achieving something like do you know what I mean when you become really successful did you feel like it did you did it feel going oh yeah I'm I'm doing something that I really enjoy and it's, it's just coming to me and people coming to to work with me I think I've, you know, I think I've never had any goals. Uh, I, you know, so far, everything I sort of done, I've done it because I, it's because it's, be, it's like, you know, it's felt right at the time, so I'll do it. And I think especially yeah. with makeup, for a very long time, I actually really resented the fact that I was still, I wanted to be doing dancing and I wanted to be doing like performing with a Theo Adams company. And there were, you know, I was really enjoying that. And the fact that I was kind of being dragged away from it by this makeup career that was taking off mm-hmm. um was and it sometimes still is I still I still sort of feel like oh but I never really meant to do this um but it's one of those things I suppose that you know for me at least I have a fairly short attention span and if something's continuing to like inform and educate me and uh you know inspire me and lead me to do other things I'll continue to pursue it mm-hmm. and so I think there are you know, and I often get asked about how, you know, what, what are your goals or, you know, and talk, you know, people ask about achievements and it honestly, it is, it is difficult to, um, to acknowledge any achievements, especially when they weren't things I ever set out to do. Mm. I didn't even know what ID magazine was and I didn't even care. <laughs> but I was more interested in riding around you know, London and, and um, you know, hanging out with the Theo Adams company and whatever it was. Yeah, yeah. Um, what, what was the shift though, when you were like, okay, I've done all this stuff and this stuff is really, really cool with Theo Adams. What point did you go, okay, maybe this is a career and I'm gonna really pursue this and I'm gonna like, this is, this is gonna be one of my things. I think I just got busy and never stopped being busy. And I think, you know- That's a nice way to do it. <laughs> well, but I but I mean you know what but sorry what I mean is um you know I needed to live and survive and I mm. I you know at one point I was I was um sharing a tiny room with my boyfriend at the time very kind that he let me stay there and I I genuinely didn't have any money um and so I just had to find something that would uh, London's expensive you know, that would allow me to exist. Yeah. And that's what makeup became. You know, I, I was, was getting booked for these kind of creative face painty jobs and ID magazine happened. And then, you know, ID magazine means you're of a, le- you know, a legitimate makeup artist. So you yeah. keep getting booked. 
It was, I know, it, I, I'm, I'm very, very fortunate and I, uh, I, you know, I don't, I, I don't mean it in any other way. It's just that I didn't really have another option at the time. I wasn't going to go and get a bar job. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and you, and you, and you, yeah. Yeah, you I've found, journey you find, and yeah, and you found your way. Totally. And I, you know, I think, um, and I think that's all it's about, really. I, um, you know, I think also you, you let go of things as, as you age and things I might have, you know, wanted when I was much younger, I feel more comfortable about not having now. And mm. I'm quite, you know, I think as you get older, you know, the sense of sort of just general gratitude, um, you know, is, is, is there's a sort of general awareness of that. And I feel very fortunate to be doing what I'm doing because, you know, I, I get to speak to people like you and talk about like dancing, whatever. Yeah. And it's just it's a nice, it is a nice existence, really. It is, it is. We um, are very, very, I mean, the whole kind of hashtag blessed. We are very blessed. I mean, it, you're blessed just to do a job that you love and that you enjoy and you get paid yeah. to do. And so that's really great. So when you let's go let's go in on to like kind of the business what do you do when you have all these sort of projects what do you do with, to keep sort of balanced in your life like is there a sort of point where you block out within the year going okay for this month i'm not going to be in london i'm going to be somewhere else or do you how yeah how do you keep mentally sane when you're really busy all the time i think um i think honestly lockdown locking me away was the only remedy because um i've I mean, I've, I've done psychotherapy for about eight years now. I sort of stopped at the beginning of lockdown because I didn't enjoy the, uh, you know, doing it over Zoom or whatever. I like to do it yeah. in person. So I think, you know, that, you know, for um, for mental health, that was the best investment and and general well-being I, I ever made. Um, but, you know, there were, I, I they got to a point where I was traveling so much. And I mean, like, every week I was on either one or two long haul flights plus um you know another stint across Europe and then I'd be in Korea and then I had to go back to LA and I just I ended up collapsing on set one day and um I think that was I'll never know when to you know I can't stop my, I really have to I work hard to stop myself mm. um and I think uh, actually just locking me away at home was probably the best solution to try and recalibrate me because also when you're freelance you want to take all these opportunities and you've got the energy to and of course, you know, of you, course. You know, and we're young so, as well um, only so young yeah and <laughs> we're young because so because you get to a point where you're 50s and you're uh, 50 plus or 45 and you've been doing it 25 years 30 years you can't do all those long haul flights all the time and stuff so it's difficult when you're young to go oh i'm young it's fine when i, I have there's a saying like i'll sleep when i'm dead it's that sort I, of thing mentality just to keep going oh god totally and actually you know i i, I mean maybe that's something that i would tell my former self you know get more sleep because i was literally getting off a plane in la and going straight to work and then not sleep it doing like you know 24 hours of shoots getting on another plane insomnia back to london so i'd end up not sleeping for like 48 hours oh, every wow. month regular basis that's and, um, crazy and uh it is crazy but you know what would so what would you so, so in, in, in our in our sort of like give back to our audience what we like to do is like we like to say something that's inspired us it might be like a mantra or anything what would you give back to your younger self or like to our audience um about sort of like something that's inspired you it might be like a mantra it might be like a film or might be, be like the way that you live your life i think um uh, i think more recently i've been thinking about sort of self-fulfilling prophecies and how to kind of maybe try and undo that I think obviously that's a, a lot of self-fulfilled prophecies are are related to ex upbringing and um and say you know projections from parents or yourself or whatever and I think you know um to kind of summarize you know if you we often tell ourselves that we are this or we can't have this or we can't do this or we can't be this or, or whatever. And I think um, to try and sort of investigate that and try and undo some of it, because 
I mean, it's such a cliche thing to say, you know, you're the only person holding yourself back, but I think that's really the truth. You are, you and, are. Uh, Jim Carrey says this really profound thing. He says, you can't contain the container because I am the container. And it, 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 literally, yeah. it literally is that sort of thing that you, if you are like suppressing yourself, you're the only one that suppressing, no one else, no one else is doing it, it's just you doing it. Yeah, and it's all, you know, non-physical things, their ideas and projections and mm. transference. And, and luckily none of that is physical. We're not mm. locked in boxes. We do have brains that we can use and freedom of speech most of the time, unless you're on social media and then you've got to be really careful. Yeah. But um, you know what I mean? So I think that's probably, but that's a hard thing to grasp, I think. And it's something that you can only get to if you're willing to sort of investigate it. Mm -hmm. And just, and, and have a look at yourself and just reflect a bit more. I think so. Well, I want to say thank you so much for coming 360 yourself. It's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, you're so warm oh. and lovely, and it's just so lovely. Oh, it was lovely. Yeah, thanks for um, asking me to be on your show. 